Welcome to the Folktale Project, this is Dan Scholes. This week we're going to end with a two-part story. It's a tale that is going to seem awfully familiar, but trust me, the ending is not one you've heard yet. And it's not unexpected, but that doesn't mean that it's a lovely ending. This is The Minstrel of Nuanar. Part 1 He was called Ronald, this tall, handsome man with blue eyes and fair hair. He had a noble bearing and was a master of song. The knight at the castle of Nuanar had made a great feast and Ronald was sitting on the drawbridge playing his harp and singing. The guests stopped their noisy conversation within doors, and knights as well as noble ladies listened breathless to the unseen singer. The proud lord of the castle bade his page bring the traveler in. Thus, the tall, handsome man, the blue-eyed, fair-haired stranger with the noble bearing, appeared before the high company. The knights looked at him with wonder, and many a handsome lady regarded him with admiration covertly. Among the high company there was a beautiful young girl, the daughter of the knight whose birthday was being celebrated. The lord of the castle rose from his richly carved stool and made a sign to the singer who was bowing graciously to the knights and ladies and lower still to the master of the castle. Give us a song, musician, in honor of our child who is seventeen years old today. The musician fixed his glance in silent admiration on the maiden. She dropped her eyes, and a lovely blush covered her cheeks. He seized his harp, and after a few chords began to sing a song of homage. Sweetly sounded the music, and even sweeter the flattering words. The maiden flushed a deeper crimson and cast down her eyes. Once, when the harper in his song compared her to a star lighting a wanderer's path, she glanced up, and their eyes met, but hers sank quickly again. She seemed to waken out of a dream when the song ended amid loud applause. She saw her father lifting up a massive goblet and handing it to the singer, saw how the latter raised it first to her, afterwards to her father and his guests, and then put it to his own lips. The maiden felt she was no longer mistress of her heart, which was beating as it had never done before. You might teach my Rothschilds to play the harp, cried the proud lord of the castle, who was in a very lively humor, having partaken freely of wine. She heard it as in a dream, and the musician bowed, murmuring that he was not worthy to receive so great an honor. He remained, however, at the castle. Lovely Rothtraut felt afraid in her heart like a trembling child crossing a bridge leading to flowery meadows. She had no mother in whom she could confide those fears for which she could find no words. She therefore yielded to her father's desire, wishing to amuse him during the long lonely evenings by playing and singing. Singing came naturally to her, for a nightingale seemed to slumber in her bosom, but she found more difficulty with the harp. Her slender fingers drew many a discordant sound from the strings, and often her father, comfortably seated in his armchair, laughed heartily at her, which made the maiden blush with shame. Her large eyes would wander from the harp to the musician's face, but her confusion only became worse when her eyes timidly met his. He was very patient with all her imperfect efforts, never blaming her, but on the contrary praising all her modest attempts beyond their merits. Then he would sing a song of his own and play some deep chords which seemed to thrill the air. The knight would listen entranced, and the maiden felt love's blissful pain in her heart. She did not know what it was or how he had long since sung himself into her soul, and her tender heart trembled at love's first revelation. The passion possessed her more and more. It spread its power over these two hearts, and soon, in the quiet garden of the castle, Ronald clasped the daughter of the proud knight to his heart. 
Love's first rapture is often followed by sorrow, however, and beautiful Rothschilds had yet to experience it. It once happened that the knight surprised his child in the musician's arms. His anger knew no bounds, and like a beast of prey he rushed at the singer, when his daughter, suddenly become a woman, placed herself bravely between her father and her lover. Her confession went to his heart like a dagger, for with trembling lips and glowing cheeks, the maiden acknowledged the secret of their love. Pale but firm, the singer stood before the knight. I am only a wanderer, but not a dishonorable one. Do not destroy with a rough hand the flower which God has planted in our hearts, but give me time. I will set out on my journey, and will take up arms for my beloved. And when I come back as a nobleman, you will give me your daughter who loves me. Either I shall return as a knight, or you will never see me again. The lord of the castle looked at him sternly, while his daughter stood weeping, holding Ronald's hand. Goodbye, maiden. Do not forget me, Rothschild. He was gone, and a wailing cry burst from the lips of the unhappy girl. And that is the first part of The Minstrel of Nuenar. And it's a story that you can probably already see is not going to end happily. This is Dan Schultz for the Folktale Project. Don't forget that you can subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Play, Overcast, anywhere you like to get your podcasts. You can follow us on Twitter at Folktale Project. You can find us on Auto Radio, TuneIn Radio, iHeart Radio, Spotify, anywhere you like to listen. And you can always head over to folktaleproject.com. We'll you find a new story waiting for you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. As always, Thank you so much for listening.